ear and this is Erock Tenor from the future. Erock Tenor who already filmed this entire episode, all of it. And with the uh, spectator footage, we're talking like seven and a half hours of footage. Erock Tenor who has now learned that you should really check your footage every single time you make any, like every time you record, every time you do anything. Because then today, as I sat down to edit everything, it was gone. Not, not, no, it wasn't gone. It was there. All the files were there, but they had captured nothing. Streamlabs settings changed or something, and it's gone. All of that work, gone. So thankfully, I have lots and lots of spectator cam footage, but I have no sort of first person cam footage, no narration, no nothing. So I think what I'm gonna do, and of all things, of course, this happens on the 20th episode, and I was gonna do something fun, like something 20 something, and I didn't, couldn't think of anything, and, and now I really can't think of anything. But that being said, See, if you look on the to-do list, if you're paying attention from the last episode, you'll notice a lot of things are checked in. That's because I did the last sort of walkthrough of all that we had accomplished. And look, we accomplished actually a lot. So I'm going to go back and maybe narrate some of the spectator cam footage, some of the other stuff that I gathered. But mainly, just so you know, we have transferred everything here. I'll actually give you a tour of everything that's completed and then show you the process of how we got here. So the command center is here now. I've got new hangar bay doors. I've got the mountain base has been all the way transferred. Did I already say that? These pipes aren't covered, but I undertook a massive project and basically using my terrain tool went into the mountain all mountain into the mountain all the way to the grinding pit and what a massive tunnel that was you'll see it but i don't think you'll fully be able to appreciate it actually maybe i'll walk you through the tunnel right now and then we'll just save the yeah the the footage i i built the printer guys i did so many things i did so many things and narrated the whole way and asked questions the whole way. And they're gone. They're gone. So nothing changed here except for we added a patron. Thank you so much for all of you patrons and for your wonderful support. And if you add yourself to this, I will be able to continue making good content and hopefully better content because I'll hopefully get a better computer that maybe won't lose all that footage. <sighs> I added scripts so I could see what the inventory manager was doing and also to get a good idea of all of my inventory. And there it is. See, and here they are. Here are the program blocks. I still need to change the screens a little bit. I need to improve just the look overall. I walled that off. You're going to see that. Let's see. I don't think I did anything else to the command center. Um, let's go down here. I added a large container. I got to this point when I was working on the hangar where just the production of everything was taking so long. And then what I found was if I added this container from the inventory manager perspective, it was able to sort things a little bit better. So that, that container actually sped up all of the production even more. And speaking of sped up production, as you can see, our assembler now has four speed modules. I got all kinds of wonderful comments. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it at four speed modules or if I'll add a power module um, as was suggested. I think I'm gonna leave this for now just because um, I just wanna see what the suck is on the power. I didn't, as, upstairs you may have noticed, I've add a, added a power monitor LCD so I could monitor that. Um, and then let's see, four yield monitor, mod monitors? I don't know what that is, modules on the refinery. So that's helping. 
and then also completed uh, this large reactor. So power, everything has been transferred, everything, which is super exciting. Um, let's see, I kind of want to go in order of cool. So it's going to get a little bit cooler here. The hangar, based on also from comments, some suggestions on ways that I could redesign this thing. Look at this guy. Look at this new hangar. It's got a couple of problems and I'll walk you through those. First of all, it's really big and I'm super excited about it. And the way that I was able to do this was designing it with, and I'll open it for you here in a second. I still have to add all of that, like command center wise. I, I want to add a bay, like a like something enclosed or encased back here in glass with different stations and such to be able to run the printer, run the hanger, and just sort of monitor the hanger. Um, and I will probably do that next episode because I'm really excited about it. But basically what I did here was used that rotor and another rotor above, and they swing these doors. See, doesn't this look, I'm kind of pumped about this. I think it looks really cool. I wanna do more on the actual encasing outside. Um, and boy, this was a massive project because it took a ton of resources, but I really love the way it turned out. Um, and again, it swings open. I'll push, I'll, I'll open it for you on a, in a second. Um, I haven't put sensors on it for whatever reason. I always wait until last to do that. Basically, I want to make sure it works first. But as you can see, one of the things that bothers me about this hanger is this gap. I've covered the gap up just using, um, you know, armor blocks behind it. And maybe that's fine. At least you can't see through it. The um, a, putting a rotor, which is what I would have liked to do, is just sort of aesthetically like a rotor that wasn't controlled or locked at all on that side would have made it look okay but the rotor doesn't reach which doesn't really make any sense to me so the gap is there i'll probably just leave it as long as i don't think about it, it doesn't bother me but there's no gap like that on the other side because the other side is really tidy like all you can see on this other side is just the tip of the rotor which i love um, i still want to cover even that gap up behind it i just realized but this side, it just doesn't fit the same way, which is annoying. So any suggestions on that would be really appreciated. And then guys, the printer. Let me walk you through the design of this new printer. Um, I completely changed my mind on how I wanted to do this. And I really like it. It doesn't work perfectly yet, but as you can see, I was able to print a collector using it. It didn't print well, and I need to rethink some aspects of the design, and in particular, I need to rethink how I connect to the projector. I'm thinking about adding the projector under the base of the printer here and just projecting it up and trying to line it up with the floor a little bit better. I'm gonna redo this whole base and add some lights, make it black, add some warning paint around it and stuff like that. But I just, I have a 3D printer at home, one of the smaller ones, and I just figured, you know, that design works really well for that printer. Why not sort of mimic it here? So obviously this took a lot more resources than I had before, but I can drop this all the way down to within about three meters of this base, turn it on and then lift it up slowly and it prints pretty well. Again, the, coll the collector was a little bit grumpy. One thing I thought about doing, if I really want to get crazy, the, I think it it reaches the bottom fine, but the rate at which it rises is problematic when it takes as many resources as the collector does. I'm thinking about adding a wall, a welding wall on this side and on the other side, maybe even on the front side. And if I can get it all right, this seems like a big project. Um, I can just sort of have that be automated and have on pistons have these welder walls move in from every corner, every side, excuse me, and then print up anything that the top one doesn't quite reach. Thinking about that, I don't know, that, that sounds like a pretty massive thing, massive build, but I think it would also look kind of cool. And if I can automate that using timer blocks, so it's just one switch or something, that might be kind of cool too. So I'd love your thoughts on that. Other than that, the hanger is not lit up yet. It needs so much more flavor and, it just feels like it's kind of messy. There's like 
extra pieces lying around because boy this took a lot of configuration i probably need to like open this up differently than this side if things are going to get in and out from the printer side but yeah let me let me open this up for you so you can see it again won't this be nice when i can just walk into a like a bay over there but for now <laughs> i was just sort of sitting in cerberus doing everything from in there so i'm just getting to cerberus and then man all the naming of all the printer thingies all the welders the printer thingies the welders and all of that took forever but it's also very am i the only one who finds the naming of all those things tedious and yet kind of satisfying anyway um uh, okay mountain hanger rotors all i have to do hopefully for this to work is click on reverse Again, all of this needs to be set up so that it's on some kind of a bay or it's in some kind of a um, system. Is only one side going out? They stopped. Why did they stop? Well, that was anticlimactic and really frustrating. What the heck? What happened? No, I promise I tested this. Ugh. I just realized I didn't test it since I put those blinking lights. Are the lights somehow messing with it? Okay, what the heck? I've used it now multiple times. You'll see that when you see the footage. And now it's not moving! Ah! This is going to be something stupid like these little lights down here, isn't it? These little lights that I added. Because nothing else is blocking it, right? Yeah, I used it with those lights on. All right, let me just see if it's something as silly as that. Ugh. Oh, uh, maybe it wasn't that. I thought it was. It moved a little bit, didn't it? Well, let's start turn it turn it off and turn it back on again. The ultimate IT trick. <laughs> Reverse. Okay, so now you should go back up. It is back. Oh, see, the limits there are working fine. And now what if I hit reverse again? Come on. Come on. Come on. What? I can't even... I can't. I can't do this. Oh, I bet you I know what it is. I want the one thing I hadn't... Now I can put those lights back. Actually, I'm not going to put those lights back. Yes, it's you. I knew it. I added this little beam after I tested. You're in the way. See, this is where that gap becomes even more annoying. You and you. Now it's gonna work, huh? Probably we need to move that top one. Yep, that's why. All right, that means the same thing's happening up here. Man, now that gap is more annoying. I guess I can just do it one layer deep. And there. Now you should move too. And now you have the lights up top. So if the lights were having an effect, well, that was a fun little detour added to our. Hey, no, those lights definitely shouldn't be having an effect. What is happening? Is it the top? Is it this? I thought I had that there out before too. It's this, isn't it? <sighs> Now there's going to be a gap on the top, too, huh? I swear I tested it before or after I added these. I must not have. Look at that. There it goes. Well. Well. That was fun. And all that scrap's about to fall, too, huh? Well, so this is how <laughs> that this is how it was supposed to work when I first pushed the button. Now it doesn't look so bad, right? Right? Is that going to the ground? It did. All right. Well, need to encase. <laughs> there it goes. So I need to figure out how to encase this thing so there aren't a ton of gaps. Swinging inside was one way to do that because then I could hide it more from the outside. Then it looks crappy from the inside and. 
I end up with a few space issues. Like I can't use the design of having the printer underneath. I still can technically, but it makes the space for the repair printer well really tight. And I didn't like that. And again, this all needs to be lit up and such. So let me do this again. Hopefully I'll push reverse on it and it will all come back up. Reverse. There they go. Closing. Ooh, see it looks that that looks kinda cool. It's still not quite right. Work to do. Hmm. Alright, so that's a tour of everything that I did. As you can see, not insignificant. So again, I will kind of narrate you through or at least subtitle you through the um, seven and a half hours of footage that I have from the spectator cam. I also, I was attacked twice, but actually they were really anticlimactic attacks. I was And I was buried so far under the mountain that I just had to use the spectator cam to watch the attacks. But I just have to show you how deep this goes. Look, so here I decided from here to go in. Hang on to your butts. Ugh, longest tunnel ever. And as you can see, I haven't even begun to weld it up yet, just because that's probably gonna be a project I have to do over time. But, ugh, man, that was a monster. So now that you have an overview of everything that I did, let's cut to the spectator cams. Enjoy the journey, the almost lost journey.
And that's it. Huh. So much accomplished. So much footage that will never be recovered. And yet, so thankful Spectator was here to capture some of it for us. So once again, thank you so much for all of you who have been with me for these 20 episodes. I am so grateful for you. I'm especially grateful for my patrons and anybody who has contributed in the comments. Please, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Please hit that notification button. And I can't wait to make 20 more episodes. See you next time. Into the black hole